Hi and welcome to this video on the aromatics topic. So in this one, mainly going to be looking at benzene. There are plenty of other aromatic rings. If you go on to do chemistry further, then you learn how to spot whether or not whether or not a ring is aromatic using Huckel's rule. But the one you'll be mainly interested in is this. So benzene, a few general characteristics about it. You will notice we've got this six carbon ring here. Above and below it, what this is, is a delocalized ring of electrons. So because of the way the, the p orbitals overlap, then they can form a little ring in here where the electrons can basically float all around them. Um, because of that, these bonds in here, they are not single bonds, they are not double bonds, they are somewhere in between. So they are kind of a bond and a half effectively. Because the double bonds are spinning around in here so fast that effectively, as I said, they just get clusters one and a half bonds. You'll notice as well it's planar, it's got a nice flat shape. Um, if it was three double bonds in there and three single bonds, it would be all deformed. Um, you wouldn't even see that actually the, the cyclohexatriene um, is more just a theoretical compound. So benzene's quite stable. Put some numbers up and we'll have a look at that. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to hydrogenate this. So as I said, this is a theoretical compound, but I'll explain where we get the numbers from. Here is benzene. So benzene's got a little ring there inside of the, the hexagon. Now, so we're adding hydrogen, effectively three lots of hydrogen there, three lots of hydrogen there, turning it into the plain old cyclohexane. Now the number for this, minus 360, it's purely theoretical. So where it comes from is effectively we know that to hydrogenate, to add the hydrogen across that double bond, break it open effectively there. So there is the other hydrogen coming off there as well, one off there initially, as you saw, kind of like that. And um, we're just adding these across there. That's minus 120 kilojoules per mole. So effectively three times it here, that's where the 360 is coming from. Now, benzene is minus 208, if I remember correctly, again, kilojoules per mole. Now, you can notice effectively here that this compound, therefore, is more stable. So, what it comes from is this ring in here. It's where it gets aromatic stability from. That ring structure gives it a bit of extra strength. So, it's actually 152 kilojoules less exothermic than we would expect. So because of that, most of the reactions which we'll do with benzene, the electrophilic substitution, it likes to keep that ring intact because that ring gives it a bit of stability. So you don't want to damage that ring there because effectively you would have to smash and pay all that extra energy to do so. So benzene more stable than this, as I said, theoretical compound. Um, now back to this sort of, there's only really two types of reactions that will do this. One, you can either burn it, so similar to all the hydrocarbons, you would just get carbon dioxide and water coming out. You'll notice it's six carbons to six hydrogens, so it would be quite a sooty flame, lots of carbon in there. You need quite a lot of oxygen to get all the CO2s, more likely you're going to get some carbon coming off as particulates. Um, but the main reaction which you'll do is the electrophilic substitution. Now, why the electrophilic? Well, again, think we've got this delocalized ring of electrons here. So this ring is actually quite electron rich. If it's electron rich, 
it's going to scare away nucleophiles. Nucleophiles do not want to come near high electron density. They want to go for electron deficient things. So benzene um, undergoes the electrophilic side of things. It will seek out and attack electron deficient species. Why substitution? Well, again, you do not want to do addition because addition breaks open and cracks open a double bond. Benzene does not want to lose its aromatic stability. So the two main things what you'll do with this are one, the nitration, and two, the Friedel-Crafts acylation. So we'll do the nitration first. Now, you need to generate the electrophiles in these, by the way. So either generating the NO2+, or generating sort of the um, the ion where your acyl group whatever you're looking for you would use the acid chloride originally so we've got sulfuric acid and nitric acid here both of them need to be concentrated by the way if you don't put concentrate you lose marks So concentrated for them both. Now it acts as an acid base reaction. One of them is a stronger acid than the other, sulfuric. So sulfuric acts as the acid, nitric acid acts as a base. So therefore we force this to take a hydrogen ion. As that. Now this will quite readily break down. The plus is strictly on nitrogen, but um, if you do it like that, you never get marks wrong for it. So we've got there our ion. This is going to be our electrophile. So this is what's going to react with the, the benzene. So you can have it as two steps, or sometimes people just prefer it as a single step reaction. Either way is fine. I usually prefer this one. Now, for how the mechanism actually goes about. Draw these big, by the way. Some people tend to go like benzene being like that and it's a bit awkward to actually see it's quite you can drop marks quite quickly on this by not having sort of the correct ring in there when we come onto it with the intermediate have it drawn big so it's nice and easy for the examiner to see right so we've got our benzene here we are going to have the, the ion come in which we just generated so the NO2 plus now we're going to attack it. So start from anywhere inside the hexagon. can be inside the ring if you wish. And we are going to attack the nitrogen. Now intermediate. Now watch where I put the ring for this. So the nitrogen joined onto this carbon. We start our ring and finish it from the two carbons around it so we do not continue in loop into this one now your positive charge will be delocalized in that ring there so have it in there you do not have it on the actual carbon now from here we need to reform that ring so we want to kick something off to get some electrons back complete that ring structure again so what happens is poor little hydrogen here he's kicked off the electrons, remember I start at the bond, it's where the electrons are. They come in and they reform the ring structure to complete, well, get the aromatic stability back. So hydrogen ion floats off wherever. So there's your nitration. So this is how you make sort of the, the TNT, things like that. In order to name this, well, this is called a nitro group, so it's just nitrobenzene. So that's sort of where the TNT name comes from, because TNT has a methyl sticking off that. It's an old style name. When you've got a methyl off a of benzene, it's called toluene. 
So the tri-nitro toluene, the tri-nitro there coming off it. The proper IUPAC name for that though is actually a bit different. As I said, toluene's an old name. Making TNT is quite hard as well, by the way, because the, the nitro group is actually an electron withdrawing group. So it tries to pull the electrons out of that benzene ring, effectively making that ring less electron rich. So it's less likely to go off and seek and attack further electrophiles. So once you've got your first nitro on, it goes quite quickly. Second one a bit slower, third one's very tough to do. So you need some pretty tough conditions to make TNT. Right, now the other one, the Friedel Crafts Acylation. So previously we generated our electrophile via the concentrated acid and effectively the concentrated nitric acid, so acting as the acid base, remember, put together. Again, we need to generate the electrophile. We need to make something to react with the benzene. So this here, the aluminium trichloride, this is going to act as our catalyst. So what happens? We react these together, so your acid chloride plus your aluminium trichloride. Remember charges, some people forget that negative charge there. If you've got a positive charge here, you must have the negative there because it's neutral across here. So we've generated our electrophile here. Now, how this acts as a catalyst, obviously a catalyst must be reformed. Later on, you'll see we release the hydrogen ion just as we did with the nitration. And what happens? Is that. So th this is how it's acting as a catalyst. It's regenerated there and it can go off and again react with some more of that. So we've made our electrophile, so now reaction with benzene. So here we go again, they've met. Electrophilic substitution again, because electrophile and substitution, because we don't want to have to pay that extra energy to break the aromatic stability. So exactly the same thing. Attack the carbon, carbon's got the positive charge. Remember, draw nice and big and clear. We are stuck on this carbon, so we start our ring up there and we finish down here. Effectively start and finish at the carbons around it. Positive charge, nice and clearly in the center of the ring. Again, we want to reform that. So, poor little hydrogen, starting at the bond, it's where the electrons are. Kicked off, and the electrons put back into the ring. So there is the H+, which I mentioned before, which goes off and reacts with the, the AlCl4- ion there to regenerate our aluminium trichloride. Now for how to name this, the, the benzene gets given its prefix name, which is phenyl. So the phenyl is this bit. Now you'll notice across here we've got a ketone functional group. Some people don't spot it, but remember you've got a carbon here effectively, carbon there, carbon there. 
So the carbon double bond oxygen, the carbonyl group, is in the middle of a carbon chain, so it's a ketone. Now, what's the length of this? Well, it's two, so it's called phenyl ethanone. I curved it there because I think otherwise it's going to go off where the camera can see. So phenyl ethanone, because F, two carbons, AN, single bond in there, own, ketone, phenyl, effectively, across this side. Um, now I mentioned before the nitro group was electron withdrawing. If I want to make this reaction go quicker, then if I had some methyl groups, so some methyl groups attached to the benzene ring, that would go quicker because methyl groups are electron releasing, so the inductive effect. They release some of their electron density into that ring, make the ring even more electron rich, so effectively it can go out and seek and attack that electrophile even quicker because it will be acting as a better nuclear file from the fact that, well, as I said, it, it's more electron rich. Um, I think that's it for the aromatics topic. It's fairly short. Um, you won't use benzene in the lab, because, well, hopefully you shouldn't. It's carcinogenic, you might get cancer and die. Um, you should know the basic naming of it, and then the main reaction is just as long as you can draw this for the electrophilic substitution. So that's it, thank you.